battlefield. Do not commit treachery or deviate from the right path. You must not mutilate dead bodies, neither, neither kill a child nor a woman nor an aged man. Bring no harm to the trees, nor burn them with fire, especially those which are fruitful. Slay not any of the enemy's flock, save for your food. You are likely to pass people who have devoted their lives to monastic or humanitarian services. Leave them alone. And this is exactly what Islam talks about when we're saying when we want to engage in fighting after diplomacy fails. We have these specific rules. I mean, we didn't come up with the term collateral damage. It's a very technical, cold term, which means the killing of innocents. That's what it means. Oh, it was an inevitable death because we had to kill the majority evil people, but you know, some innocents had to die. That's what collateral damage is. We, didn't, we don't invent terms like this. Every innocent person is a person that should be mourned and we should regret. So let me just walk through some of the rights concerning the battlefield and combatants. Now, first and foremost, we have a very general principle in the Quran in chapter 5, verse 32. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, whoever kills a human being without any reason, like a manslaughter or corruption of the earth, it is as though he has killed the whole of mankind. So what he tells us now, is that Allah is, a is telling us that to kill someone, it has to be via a due process, via law, or via just reasons. This is why Allah in the Quran in chapter 6 verses 151, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, do not kill a soul, which Allah has made sacred except through due process of law. And this is why the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa said, the greatest sins are to associate something with God, shirk, and to kill human beings. Now, Im immediately after the verse of the Holy Quran, of the Noble Quran, which was mentioned in the connection of the right to life, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and whoever saves a life, it is as though he has saved the lives of all of mankind. So we see these values from the Qur'an and Sunnah really being strong about killing innocents and killing in an unjust way. Following from this, we also have the rights of combatants. For example, we're not allowed to torture. And we're not allowed to torture with fire as well. In the hadith of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa that can be found in Abu Dawood, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, punishment by fire does not Behave anyone except the master of the fire, Allah Azza wa Jal. Also, we have protection of the wounded. The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Do not attack a wounded person. Also, we have that prisoners of war should not be slain. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was very clear and he said, No prisoner of war should be put to the sword. Also, the Prophet Muhammad said no one should be tied to be killed. He said, rather, the narration goes that the Prophet has prohibited the killing of anyone who is tied or is in captivity. Also, we have teachings concerning the looting and the destruction in the enemy's country. It's been narrated in the hadith in Al-Bukhari and Abu Dawood that the Prophet said, the Prophet has prohibited the believers from loot and plunder. And in another hadith in Abu Dawood, the Prophet said, the loot is no more lawful than the pig. So it's these prohibitions. Obviously, we also believe in the sanctity of a dead body. In a hadith that could be found in Al-Bukhari and Abu Dawood, the Prophet said, the Prophet has prohibited us from mutilating the corpses of the enemies. Also, we believe in returning the corpses to the enemy. There was a time when the unbelievers presented 10,000 dinars to the Prophet ﷺ and requested that the dead body of the fallen warrior may be handed over them. And the Prophet ﷺ replied, I do not sell dead bodies. You can take away the corpse of your fallen comrade. And also we believe in the prohibition of the breach of treaties when we're engaged in war. If we have a treaty with someone, we cannot breach any treaty. Islam has strictly prohibited this. Now one of the instructions that the Prophet ﷺ gave to the Muslim warriors, if you like, 
when he was sending them to the battlefield, he said, do not be guilty of the breach of faith or the breach of treaties. Now, look at this. Take these amazing, beautiful narratives and values and contrast them to what happens in the West on a practical level. Now, when Western nations invade countries, you see so many innocents die. I mean, look at 1.2 million people in Iraq. Thousands in Afghanistan. And even the BBC, the British Broadcasting Corporation, reports that, you know, the smart bombs? You know, they're supposed to invent these smart bombs that are laser guided and they only kill enemies. That they said they're not so smart. They only, only 40% of them hit the targets. Now, I want to use the Zionists as an example to see how unjust their foreign policy is. Take the IDF as an example. They murdered hundreds of Egyptian prisoners of war in the both the 1956 and 19, 1967 wars. In 1967, the Zionists expelled 100,000 and 260,000, or between 100,000 and 260,000 Palestinians from the newly conquered West Bank and drove almost 100,000 Syrians from the Golan Heights. According to Amnesty International, Israel has destroyed more than 10,000 homes between 1967 and 2003. Israel was complicit in the Sabra and Shatila massacre of 3,000 innocent lives. We don't see this mourned every year by the West, do we? We remember the 3,000 lives in 9-11, but what about the massacre of innocent human beings in Sabra and Shatila? I'm not saying, I'm not trying to compare the two. But I'm saying, is the blood of a Muslim less worth than the blood of a non-Muslim? Is that what people are trying to say? Islam doesn't believe in this. We believe in every human blood has equal value from this perspective. Israel was complicit in this massacre. And after an Israeli investigation, the commission found the defense minister, Ariel Sharon, to bear personal responsibility, quote-unquote. During the relatively recent Lebanese war, the IDF fired over one million bomblets, one million, in a population of 650,000 in southern Lebanon. That's like two bombs per person. And one Israeli soldier said, what we did was insane and monstrous. Human Rights Watch concluded, Israel has violated one of the most fundamental tenets of the laws of war, the duty to carry out attacks on only military targets. Now, Professor of Political Science John Mersheimer and Professor of International Affairs Stephen Walt, they state, viewed objectively, Israel's past and present conduct offers little moral basis for privileging it over the Palestinians. We know Israel is the target of 65 UN resolutions. The themes of these resolutions include, and I'm quoting, the major themes reflected in the UN resolutions against Israel over the years are its unlawful attacks on its neighbors, its violations of the human rights of the Palestinians, including deportations, demolitions of homes, and other collective punishments, its confiscation of Palestinian land, its establishment of illegal settlements, and its refusal to abide by the UN Charter and the 1949 Fourth Geneva Convention relative to the protection of civilian, civilian persons in a time of war. And this is one example, this is using the Zionist entity. If I were to talk to you about the United States of America, I mean, subhanAllah, what they've done to South America alone, they've been very intimate in the political affairs of the Latin Americans and Europe itself and Africa. I mean, we could go on and on and on, but if we were here, we'd be here until Ramadan. So, this is for your own research to check out for yourself. So I use the Zionists as an example. 